is the, I think there's a, there's an assumption among people who are not songwriters that you are going to be writing so much when you're home since March and what a great time to be creative. And I just read this one comment today on some songwriters Instagram uh, feed about how uh, people commented, I'll bet you're writing a lot of tunes now, you know, since you're not leaving the house. But my experience talking to songwriters has been that that's not the case, that there's a limit to which I guess emotional weight can just burden you and make it hard to, to, to write and be creative. And, you know, sure, Shakespeare wrote King Lear during the plague, but I think there's this expectation that once this ends, you guys are going to have so many songs you're writing all the time, but that's not really the case. So I guess, Margaret, you know, not only in the past year with politically and pandemically and all that stuff, I guess in general, is it hard to write uh, under great emotional weight or is that easy for you? Oh, I think that it's... I think that right now it feels like quite an anomaly, like the conditions feel like such an anomaly that um, whether I'm emotional or not, I don't, I don't think it really plays into it. I think that, you know, for musicians right now, it's like everyone is jobless. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that is such a, um, just a logistical, just real life thing of like, you know, um, if you don't have a job, and thankfully, you know, by virtue of what we do, we're very creative. So <laughs> we can, we're, we're a very resilient bunch. So uh, thankfully, you know, most of my community has been able to figure things out and be creative. But um, when you lose your job, it's stressful, you know, it's mm -hmm. really stressful. So I think that there, and on top of that, you know, the whole world kind of struggling with public health and on top of that, like our nation, you know, reckoning with so much racial karma, um, it's, it's, it's just a lot. And I think that um, for me, there, I, I've totally written songs, certainly, um, but it hasn't always been at the top of my list because there's a lot of other things going on right now. So um, it's a mixed bag. It's a really mixed bag. Sarah, how about you? Yeah, I guess in general, you know, talk about what's happening. Has this been a creative time for you? And I guess generally, are you able to write with an emotional weight or do you need distance from it to be able to write about something like that? It's funny. I mean, I think for me, it hasn't been a wildly creative time, um, but I've, I've actually kind of chalked that up to the timing of how this pandemic fell in relation to the release of my record. Mm -hmm. And I like something I've been thinking about a lot is that I, I feel like I've always written in a very cyclical way where, you know, I kind of write for a year or two leading up to a record and then the record comes out and then my brain is kind of focused on touring and like not the writing part of my life. And it's kind of like a release of, creative energy. Um, and I feel like I had that, I, it was sort of building up over 2019, <laughs> you know, I was just so focused on writing for the whole year. And so it was funny timing for when the lockdown happened, I felt like I had just had this huge outpouring of writing energy. And so, you know, it, it actually, if it hadn't been for the timing of that, I do think that I would be writing a lot more in this time, but it's just, I sort of wrote about what I had to write about at this point in my life. And then this happened and, and it's kind of everything that Margaret said, like the emotional weight, um, just losing the reality of losing m my job and kind of being really d down about that, you know, kind of, honestly, it, it started in August, I think for me, it was like when the reality of like, how long this was going to go on set in. And, um, you know, I think, yeah. So in that sense, I haven't been writing a lot because I feel like I sort of had just finished that cycle when this all began. Um, but something that has been helping me more recently has been sort of what, what, um, Margaret was saying is like thinking of myself as a student hmm. and, um, you know, studying, learning other people's songs, not, not putting so much pressure on, having to write myself 
but just finding the joy and like why I'm even doing this in the first place and like why I write songs in the first place. And um, because we need that extra joy right now, it's like, there's not a lot of it out there. And so, you know, a way that I find that for myself is to listen to songs that I love and learn them. And, and I think in the last month or so I've started, it took me so it's taken me so long and I'm still in the process of it, of just, finding my routine out just music aside (laughs) like finding a good healthy routine um like just day to day to to kind of be at at a starting at a good starting point and that has taken a lot of brain space and now that I feel like I've kind of like spent several months focusing on that I feel like I'm just starting to be in a place where I can you know think about the craft in terms of how it fits into my daily routine, because I never really had a daily routine before this time. Like it was, it was different every day, you know, you're in a different place every day. And um, I just never really focused on that before. So it's kind of nice to now like sort of start to feel the shift coming back around of like, okay, I think, I think I'm about to have the brain capacity to start to write again and be creative. And that feels good. And I, I have written like, one or two songs in this time, but in general, not a lot. <laughs> yeah. Margaret, do you, how much writing do you do, if any, outside of songwriting, whether it's, you know, journaling, poems, do you do other types of writing besides songwriting outside of this? I, I it's, a, it's mixed. I, I used to write a, a lot of poetry. I, I considered myself, I think, more of a poet than a songwriter. Um, in my really early twenties. Um, so that was, took up a lot of my time. I'm a really, I read a lot. And then in terms of actual prose I, that I feel like, um, I have such adoration for fiction writers. I, I, I like wish that I had that. <laughs> and I think it's a little bit of like, um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's like so much adoration that I, like, I can't, I can't, I can't deal a little bit, um, where I wish that I could. And I kind of, you know, I'm like on the sidelines, like clapping and wishing that I had that trait. I've taken some writing classes. Um, I I'm kind of plugging away, getting my, my college degree. I never went to college. So, I mean, I went to Berkeley for a semester, but I wasn't right. actually in college. So, um, I was recently taking some writing classes and it was pretty enthralling. So, I, I hope to be, I hope to write a book someday in my lifetime, for sure. That's a, that's an aspiration, but um, I'm a big fan of the written word and I've written quite a bit of poetry, but I don't, mostly I spend my tom- time songwriting for the most part. Do you, do you journal? And I, I ask this because I feel like songwriters fall into three camps. They journal and they love the fact that they journal. They don't journal, but they wish they journal and they don't journal, but they have no desire to ever journal. Uh, so it's very three distinct camps. So do you, is journaling, how much journaling do you do, if any? I don't journal. I don't journal no. at all. I, I, um, when I write, I usually have, there's a little time where I usually kind of talk to myself on paper, um, just about my own life and process, you know, what the topic is and how it kind of hit, where it kind of hits for me personally. So I guess that's kind of a journal entry, but I'm not a journaler. I don't really journal, but I, I, I hear that it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, I I tell you, there's some that are religious about it, but yeah. others say, yeah, you know, I don't get it. I don't need it. And I'm not going to start. Um, but Sarah, how about you? I guess, do you do writing outside of songwriting? Does that include journaling and, and all that stuff? Uh, not really. I, I Sadly, I fall into the second camp. I don't journal and I desperately wish I journaled. <laughs> It's like one of those, those things that always kind of pops up every few months on my to-do list, like journal, (laughs) write other things than music. And for whatever reason, I've not gotten around to doing that. Um, But I have, I hope to. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's always been, it's always been songs for me. That's just always been the way that I've written. And usually it comes in kind of snippets form um initially like just little little bursts of ideas I mean like I have you know thousands and thousands of notes <laughs> um on my on my note app on my phone you know just little ideas that pop up and so I'm 
I'm always engaging with those ideas, but I'm not necessarily like writing long form um, prose about them. <laughs> well, when I was a professor, I told my students that um, they need to understand the, they need to understand that the writing process is always taking place. That if you think about the writing process is only taking place while you're actually putting pen to paper, it's pretty daunting. But my writing process is taking place as I'm eating, as I'm thinking, as I'm working out, as I'm probably as I'm sleeping. Um, and, and when I think about it that way, I think that gives me a kind of a sense of relief and takes this pressure off me as a writer. If I know that somewhere up there, those ideas are kind of stewing around, even though I may not be putting them to paper, right? Sarah, I mean, is that kind yeah, of- Yeah, that no, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I'm, and I'm trying, you know, I think what I'm, even if I'm not journaling every day or, you know, writing longer entries every day, I'm, I'm still trying to check in with that every day. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not sitting down and like, quote unquote, working on a song or trying to finish a song, I'm still trying to like check into that place every day. Usually for me, it comes- late at night. Uh, this is like another, I wish it was the morning, but it happens at night right. kind of scenario. Um, you know, kind of, it just seems, especially with my last record, you know, I would be trying to work on it all day. And then right as I'm trying to fall asleep, that's when the ideas usually come. And, you know, you have to, you have to like write them down or else they'll be gone in the morning. So so Margaret, let's talk about that. I'm going to call it the ritual rather than the process. Um, and I'm fascinated by artists' rituals, time of day, place, things we, we things we need to have with us when we write. I know there are things, there are certain chairs I like to be in. Um, so Margaret, how important is that ritual to your writing process, any of those things, environment, time of day, things like that? I think... Um... It was, it's funny because something, my, my husband, now husband, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Um, Julian, he was talking to me recently about how I felt like I'm like, yeah, I'm like not precious at all. And I'm able to just write anywhere. whatever. <laughs> he was like, you curate everything around you. So specifically um, in maybe even reference to like, you know, pictures or art around me or everything has to be like my office often, often has to be very particular, um, which I never realized, but yesterday actually he pointed out that every house we've ever lived in the office for me is, it's just, just so all the time. So I think that that's something is I have to kind of have, uh, just my environment of where I return to, I think be inspiring and have it feel, um, like there's art around and that there's things around that I like a lot. I think I'm a little bit of, um, a curator. I like things to be in a certain way. Um, so that's one thing that I think I've noticed in the workspaces that I set up over the years in every apartment I've had, et cetera. There's always, well, similar to behind me, there's always this orb of pictures somewhere. <laughs> it kind of frames, you know, wherever I am. And there's usually, um, yeah, my desk setup is pretty particular in the way that I like it. But in terms of the actual, I think the honestly, the, the actual process rather than the objects is the thing that I notice the most is that I like to show up and kind of work on songs similarly every time. Um, and I've, I've noticed that that is usually, I liked of this last maybe three years or so, I like to show up and usually, I guess it's kind of like just showing up and using improvisation as a means of songwriting. So just taking out the guitar and acting like I know how the song goes <laughs> basically mm. uh, and playing through a song and knowing that I kind of have certain tendencies for verses and choruses and bridges quarterly and melodically and just making those happen in real time. So that's, that's often how I like to show up because I don't have to show up with ideas. I can just show up and make. Um, and I think it's taught me to, to uh, really let the margins be really wide in terms of what happens in a song and in terms of what I think is um, like a success or a failure. Those things, it, it's like there are no successes or failures if you're in that state of mind of just like, I'm going to, usually it's 15 minutes for me. I'm going to, I'm going to act like I know this song that I've never played before <laughs> for 15 minutes straight. And usually 
I work through probably, you know, two choruses, maybe a couple different verses, a bridge, and whether they all go to the same song or not, I then afterward listen back to that voice memo and see what happened. Um, so that's kind of the, the more, the actual writing process for me in terms of the environment. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of particular. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how you said you weren't, then you told me the exact minute and the exact things you have to have behind you. That, that, all I'm listening, I'm thinking, that's a complete, very particular process. Um, so when I, yeah, I want to ask you about that 15 minutes, though. Is that, where did you come up with that? So is that is that you give yourself 15 and at the end of 15, you see what you have? Or how does how does that work exactly? I just noticed that when I, you know, if I, I think it's something to do with stamina. Like I, I, I enjoy, I think creating some stamina around the writing process. Cause I think sometimes when I just say, okay, I wrote for three minutes and now I'm going to go have lunch or whatever. It, it kind of, it just starts adding up to feeling like I don't really have a process and that it's always this, this open ended vibe. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, when I stay for 15 minutes straight in one sitting and also like to boot, I'm not going like, I wonder what I should do. It's really just me playing and the, yeah. the lyrics don't make sense. And the chords don't really make sense. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like punching above my weight a little bit during those 15 minutes. So um, it's not like necessarily, you know, uh, that music that I'm playing in those 15 minutes, isn't something I would deem, like genius from a show or something that I, this is the thing that I made. It's just something that I have made in that moment. And honestly, I mean, lately, those are some of my favorite things that I write are just these things that I actually kind of am comfortable with exploring in the moment and not feeling like I'm going to write about X, Y, and Z. Instead, it just comes out. And then afterward, I start to understand what, what I'm talking about. Um, and what I'm intending and what I'm actually, my subconscious is kind of, you know, tapping at. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then I start to kind of use more of my critical brain and, and start to kind of, you know, uh, creatively put things together like a puzzle. But those 15 minutes, usually I do, honestly, <laughs> I do two 15 minute rounds. <laughs> I do my first 15 minutes. And then usually by minute, like five or six, I'm like, get me out of here. This is, this is so uncomfortable. And it, it's like clockwork. Like I look at the thing. I'm like, is this ever going to end? And then I keep going. And, and then you're kind it's kind of like running like the first 20 minutes. It's terrible. And then after that, it feels great. Um, and then I listen to that. Then I usually make another 15 minute, you know, that one's less on the dot. <laughs> and then after that, I start to kind of um, make sense of what I'm doing, you know, for that song at that moment. Uh, Sarah, how about you? What is that process or that ritual like for you? Man, it's not, <laughs> it's not down to the minute. <laughs> like, well, I was going to say, let me say, uh, just to summarize with Margaret. Also, Margaret mine has is no process. always down to the minute. I sound like a little <laughs> bit like a psycho. <laughs> but Margaret it is has no... kind of like that. It is, I guess I am a little bit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Margaret has no process, but she has a very specific process. So that that's that's the, the summary of this so far. So, um, right. but I, I will, yeah. So uh, Sarah, go ahead. So I guess uh, maybe if you don't have a process or any things important for you to have an effective, you know, routine, like I said, time of day, you know, place things you have to have with you, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, for a long time, kind of this 2020 into 2021 aside, I feel like the way that I worked, it was, it was very tough for me to write on tour, which was most of the time, but I considered that like my collection time in a way like it, it, when I was traveling when I was in the world when I was not in my little apartment bubble cocoon kind of zone that's when I was collecting and then when I would get home and just have my space um, that was the time that I I like to call it sifting through you know like going back through and listening I, I kind of tend to collect um, words and music separately of each other in general. Um, at the same time, I, I actually kind of relate to what Margaret was saying, where you kind of sit down and you're almost trying to act like the song already exists and, and you're sort of fumbling through the words, but you're trying to make it 
like put it into the air, so to speak. Um, so sometimes that happens, but in general, I think the words and music come, come separately for me. Um, and so like when I'm not, I would say if I had a ritual, it's that I like to collect, collect, collect as often as possible. Um, and then, you know, every couple weeks, you know, it, when I was on tour, it was like, if I was out for three weeks, then I'd come home for a week and that week, when I would be home in my apartment alone, that would be the time that I would usually like late morning, you know, after having some coffee and some breakfast, sit at my desk and listen to the voice memos, read through the notes and kind of pretty instantane instantaneously, like going through that stuff, things would start to match up together. And I would then sit with the instrument that I wrote the idea on and it would kind of gel together. And, and from that point, then I would actually like sit with the song and try to finish the song once kind of the form and everything was there. Um, so I feel like that's how I've written most of my songs. Um, as far as deadlines, you know, I co-writing, it's so funny. I was so opposed to co-writing for so long. It, it, it really was like one of those things that managers and people and on kind of the business side of music would from an early age kind of say like you need to set up a co-writing session you need to like go do this with other people and it'll be good for you and you know songwriting was such a solitary uh, personal act for me for so long and that's how I started doing it just in my room alone you know that's how it kind of continued in New York like in my apartment alone and it was really tough for me to imagine doing that with other people you know especially people I didn't know which a lot of you know set up songwriting sessions especially here in Nashville are that way um but I have to say like as I've gotten older I've you know eventually I opened myself up to to doing that with people that I actually knew and artists that I respected and, and had a musical trust you know for and it's I find that the co-writes that I do now, specifically with, you know, more recently with John Leventhal, um, you know, we wrote a, a bunch of songs on my last record where we're actually writing, we're working on a song together now. That, I love that as almost like a deadline where it's not, there's not a deadline of like when the song needs to be finished, but you feel accountable <laughs> to the other person in a way that I think is really beautiful. <laughs> and yeah. and it, it, it really inspires me and, makes me want to just like you know hit the ground running like working on the songs and keep showing even though we're not together in the same space working on the music like keep showing up for that person you know and I think that that has been something that has helped me you know through this time and I think will continue to help me um as kind of a ritual um to yeah, just I, I love writing with John, first of all. It's like it, this this wouldn't work with everyone. <laughs> so it, yeah. it's not just the fact that there's someone else there. But, you know, I think I think even like another thing I've thought about a lot in terms of that, like showing up for for him and, and showing up for the other writer is specifically writing with him. It's the most separate the music and the lyrics has been, um, I would say, ever in my writing process like even though I would separate the music and lyrics for myself I was still in charge of both of those things and writing with John has been the first time that oftentimes he'll write the music and he'll send me a track and I'll just focus on the words like it's and it's been a really I feel like it's really allowed me to grow lyrically to kind of have that separate space in my brain where I'm not so concerned about the music because it's already sort of there and I can just edit and revise. I think, I think before when the music was like, so wrapped, when the words were so wrapped up in the music, it was sometimes hard for me, like on some of my first albums, like it was hard for me to revise lyrics um, because, Why? because they would, they were so connected to the way I wrote the melody. And, you know, if it, if it was like a phrase that went up a certain way and the, and the words matched it just perfectly, it was, I was more concerned with how the words matched the music 
as opposed to what the words were saying, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I guess. Um, And now I'm more concerned with what am I saying? Like what, what story am I telling? You know um, I want to paint a clear picture. And I think a lot of that has come from being trying to be more accountable as a writer. Like, I mean, I always want there to be mystery within my songs, but I also, you know, this actually, not to be long-winded, but writing with Sarah and Aoife and my band I'm With Her was kind of the first thing that started this for me where we would be sitting around working on songs together and I would like play a verse that I had worked on and they would be like, that's so cool. What does that, what does that mean? You know, and then have to explain it to them speaking, but then say like, no, I just want, I don't want to explain it speaking. I need to, I need to write the song better. (laughs) Like if they have to ask what it means, you know. Um, Margaret, you mentioned running earlier. Uh, I'm a big runner. Um, and a lot of songwriters have told me about the role of movement uh, in their process. Running, walking, swimming, hiking, biking, all that stuff. I'm a firm believer. I actually wrote about, about this in the Washington Post a couple of years ago. There's a distinct link between uh, aerobic exercise and creativity immediately afterwards, not, you know, not years, it's immediate and there's research behind it. So how much Margaret of a part, how much uh, uh, is movement a part of your creative routine? Do you use it to get stuck? I'm mean, sorry, to get unstuck. Um, do ideas come to you when you're moving? Things like that. I think, um, I, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure of it. I, I don't think I've ever really like linked it so explicitly, but I think that there is, um, I've, I've been a runner for a long time and I've, I've ran less lately cause it's freezing outside, but, um, I have, you know, run some races and gotten into it at different points in my life. And I like running a lot and I think it clears my mind and feels really good. Honestly, when I just exercise, I just feel, I feel ready to make more than not. So I think it's always been a good thing for me. I got really deep into boxing for a while and that was, um, when I lived in New York and that was probably, um, I think it was probably the first time I'd ever found something that a physical exercise where it was okay to be like angry. I felt like hmm. it, was, it really, um, I think that often in my songwriting, that was, that's a, a <laughs> uh, an outlet for me in my, in feeling upset. Um, and then I started to find like a, uh, kind of a, a more physical outlet for that. And I think it it affected my songwriting different points where I could, you know, like the subject matter could vary more because I I had taken care of, um, you know, I think, I think that was something that I felt more dissociated from just for myself is being okay with being mad or being, you know, aggressive or anything just in a bodily way. Um, And so boxing just really, I think it helped me in this, in the sense that it just felt deeply technical, which I guess I, I might have a propensity for, <laughs> and also having it feel um, just physical in a way that uh, really just made me feel very clear afterward. Um, so boxing and running have been probably the, the biggest kind of loves in my world of kind of physical movement and totally feel linked to me being more productive, happier just as a person. Um, and feel like, again, it's like kind of like what Sarah was talking about. If you tour, you know, a good amount of your life and then you don't all of a sudden, it's awkward. It's a weird place to be in. So I think that um, when you start to get these things that feel like these little hubs for routine, um, exercise feels totally like one of them. And when I start to slip up in that way, yeah, I don't, I don't want to write as much. I don't want to do as much. Um, so definitely for me, but, but I don't, it's not a part of my songwriting process. Um, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've had, I've had some, I think Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam, I talked to him a couple, I interviewed him a, cu- a couple of months ago and he has this whole theory about literally how bipedal movement, the rhythm and the cadence actually gives him song ideas. And, uh, you know, the things I've heard recently, uh, one songwriter told me he was in a car. It was the guy from the Black Pumas and uh, the turn signal from his car gave him a rhythm and he wrote a song over that. Um, that actually, turn, turning signals, there's something about turning signals that is kind of uh, magic. I don't know what, 
I can I can confirm that I've also been inspired by turning signals before. <laughs> <laughs> and another one told me it was recently the the alarm, the alert that tells you when your lights are on. That was the other thing. And he wrote an entire song based on that. So um Sarah, how about you? Uh is that a part of your process? Do you get song ideas from it? Um no, I would say it's almost I I I've, I've been into running I guess for the last well, whenever I'm with her kind of started touring cuz Ifa is a really kind of avid runner and I I had never really had like a consistent exercise routine. I would just sort of dabble in a lot of different things and and kind of figure out what felt good day to day and then when when we started going on tour um I just started running with her like every day for kind of just initially just for fun. And then like the second year of tour, she always runs the Brooklyn half marathon. Um, and she was like, sign up, you're doing it with me. Like, and so it was great. We, I mean, we were, this was in 2018, I think. And we were on tour literally constantly and like back and forth to Europe, like three times in, in like six months. And um, we just, ran and and I, I trained with her basically and um wound up running the half marathon with her and it's funny because she is actually when you said um you know who the Pearl Jam person said the yes the running, Stone Gossard yeah yeah um she is that way um where she hmm. says like lyric ideas come to her when she's running it's for me it actually serves as like a way to clear my mm -hmm. brain and kind of it's, it's more like meditation and that's in it. And that's also something that I've been working into my routine this year, um, which has helped exponentially every, every morning. It's like the first thing I do just for 10 minutes. And it, like, I, I, I told myself, like, I'm going to do this, not look at my phone, you know, at all until after this is done. And that has helped. That's just helped so much. Um, so I feel like running is more like that for me where it as opposed so occasionally ideas will pop up and I'll have to stop and like write them down but I would say more often than not it's more about creating space um, and kind of clarity so that when I do sit down later you know that there's there's kind of a more, more focused energy there um Margaret let's talk um books uh I think both of you have mentioned you know reading um and I guess, Margaret, who are some of your, how much of, how much do you read? I find that songwriters are voracious readers far more than I think the general public. Um, so Margaret, who are some of your favorite authors? Does that impact your writing process? Um, and yeah, who do you like to read? Oh gosh. Um, there's a lot of. I know it's a big, it's a heavy, it's a big question. I know. For sure. Um, but people that like kind of, you know, like landmarks of, of authors that I really love. Um, I like surrealist like fiction. I think that that's really fun to read. So I'm into Joseph Mitchell a lot. I really like Joseph Mitchell's books. Um, George Saunders is amazing. Yeah. Uh, James Baldwin is probably my favorite writer of all time. Um, I'm reading Beloved right now, uh, Toni Morrison book that's absolutely incredible. Um, and who else? Um, I'm listening to books on cassette right now, which is really been, cassette. Yeah, cassette. I I, I just inherited a um, a boombox that I'm very smitten with um, from my grandfather, and 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 cassettes from him too that are really amazing. So I've been listening to my Angelou on cassette, which has been really great. Um, I'm reading uh, my grandmother's hands, which is a Resma, uh, what's his last name? Malakam, I think, um, which is really, really interesting and very heavy and, and beautiful. Um, and a process, a lot of exercises about anti-racism in that book. Um, yeah, the list goes on. I'm, I'm, I like reading a lot. And I, I think I'm also like a kind of a book hoarder a little bit. Like I, I'm always reading something. I'm not, I, I am not reading like, uh, I'm usually reading like three or four books at once. And so I'm- I was gonna ask you that, yeah. Dabbling. Um, and so it's it's a dabbling vibe for sure. I'm always I... switching between a lot of different books. Um, so 
Stranger in a Strange Land. I'm reading that right now too. Sci-fi. I like I like science fiction a lot. Um, so there's some books. There's some, some writers. <laughs> That's a good list. I I was never a more than one book at a time person until some songwriter told me that he reads I think three at a time, and. Yeah what he likes about that is that when he's not reading that one book, it's still stewing in his mind. He's thinking about it. That completely changed my reading habits. I mean, I do, I do carve out time every day. That is a part of my daily routine. No matter what I'm doing, I'm going to read, you know, for probably a half hour. It, I mean, maybe more than that. It depends, but I do find that, you know, I make that a part of my routine, just like brushing my teeth. Um, because without that, I think it's difficult, but reading multiple books at a time, um, changed my process entirely and it, it it takes longer to read those books but i love doing it um and i'll read like one fiction one non-fiction book and i don't know you know something else i, I can't read the same genre it's got to be different genres um so margaret i guess follow up to that is um do you find that those things ever make their way into your music your lyrics or anything like that Oh, definitely. I don't think it's, it's not like, um, you know, directly paralleled. I don't feel like I'm, you know, hearing words and getting inspired by them, but I think I'm just inspired by the mastery of yeah. authors. If I'm reading good books, I want to write better songs. If, I'm, if yeah. I'm watching good film, I want to write better songs. If I'm seeing good art, I want to write better songs. I think that's actually one of the thrills of, um, I mean, we lived in New York city. We're, we're just about, we're kind of between houses just about to move back to the East coast, but we lived in New York City for 10 years. And I think that that's also such an education from New York. You're just constantly, and I know that Sarah can attest to this too, is that you're just constantly around so many people that are just at the top of their game at all times that you just wake up and go like, all right, get to it. Like, yeah. What are you gonna do today? <laughs> you know, yeah. It's a little bit of like a punch in the gut. Um, and so, you know, some days that feels incredible and it just feels so inspiring. Other days you're just like, get me out of here because this is really too much on a daily basis. Um, but there's something about that mentality of just, you know, if you're surrounded by deeply, deeply interesting, hardworking people all day long, then you want to be deeply interesting and hardworking. <laughs> right. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, totally. So I feel like the New York effect, like um, there's some, there's, there's a part of me that will forever be you know a new yorker on that level of just feeling like like come on like chop mm. chop <laughs> let's get this. right right get to it <laughs> um sarah how about you reading habits let's talk yeah um you know it's it's kind of if i'm being completely honest it's pretty similar to my journaling um you know <laughs> i i i don't do a ton of it i wish i did more um but that has been um a pro of this time. Um, I've, I have been reading more in the last year, um, just having all this time in one place. And also my, my boyfriend is a voracious reader. So just being in the house with him and he's constantly reading, it makes me want to read more. Um, I, I feel like I've always had a habit, a bad habit of like starting a million books and then not finishing them. Um, Cause I'm just like, so excited to I guess kind of in a similar way of like reading a bunch of things at the same time. But then I just, I don't know if it's from my days of just like being on tour. Um, I would just get, you know, if I started a book before going on tour and then I'd bring it with me with the intention of finishing it. And then I don't know, just being, first of all, I can't read in a moving vehicle. It, it's not possible for me. I get very sick. And so um yeah, I feel like I would, by the time I got to the hotel, I just want to crash out and like, um, or sort of stare at my phone and <laughs> into the abyss, um, if I'm being honest. But this, I, I am reading um, uh, Lonesome Dove right now by Larry McMurtry. Oh, nice. Um, that Great book. Yeah. So like his son, James McMurtry. I interviewed James. He's on my site. Yeah, he's well, I don't know. He might be my favorite songwriter. Uh, yeah, everyone. check out the I interview. Think. It's it's I, fantastic. I will. I, I if I had to pick one person, it might be him. Um, yeah. I just, it's sort of it's funny because I feel like a lot of people probably worked the other way, where Larry led them to James, and it's the opposite for me. Like James's songs and his songwriting led me to Larry McMurtry, and I, you know, it's he might be my favorite writer, like Larry McMurtry. Um, yeah. You know, I just, 
it's just one of those things where it's like when you hear a John Prine song, you know, you think this is so simple and how did he think of this, you know? And that's, that's kind of how I feel when I read Larry McMurtry. Um, but I've and also imagine, thought, yeah. I, sorry, imagine that McMurtry then, that kind of writing style probably makes it way into your lyrics. I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I definitely studied it when I was writing this last record a yeah. um, hundred. I mean, I was almost exclusively listening to James McMurtry and, and kind of dabbling in um, some just reading like about Larry McMurtry. Um, just, just his whole vibe is like very. I just love him. <laughs> He's such a badass. Um, so yeah, and especially because a lot of my record, I'm from Texas, and yeah. a lot of the songs were kind of about my hometown in Texas. Just a lot of the imagery it's, it's very nostalgic for me. Like I can, I can picture so much of his writing in my head. And um, I've also just, I, I almost feel like it's a cliche thing to say at this point, but I have been super inspired by Mary Oliver and her poems. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like she's been specifically with my mom, like my mom has that sort of sensibility of like a Mary Oliver poem. <laughs> and um, it, that's brought a lot of comfort in this time as well because I haven't been able to see my family and definitely like reading Mary Oliver poems have, has made me feel connected to my mom like from far away hmm. I, I don't know like if that makes sense at all but it yeah certainly like a, kind of an underlying thing and um so yeah I'm excited like I've in the last month even I've been actually reading every day and it's felt so good and so I'm excited I think that'll maybe be something from this time that I didn't do regularly before but I hope to kind of carry it with me beyond beyond this time what are yeah. you doing now Ben I'm so curious yeah so I just finished Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby and it's a very he's he it's it, he's black and it's a black uh crime novel and there are very few black crime black crime novelists and it was an amazing book blacktop wasteland essay cosby uh, c-o-s-b-y that was amazing and then before that i read fall back down when i die by joe wilkins and he is a poet from montana but he's also a novelist and you know you get poets that can write good novels it doesn't happen very often and the language is beautiful and it's there's a lot of current themes as far as like land ownership um, you know, things going on in Mont Montana, the, you know, and it's a great book. Um, I finally read Interpreter of Maladies by Junpa Lahiri, which was stunningly beautiful. Um, what else have I read? Those are the three. I feel like there's Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. That was an amazing book. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that, those, the, the Blacktop Wasteland was incredible. Um, I would, that's a great book and, and, but fall back down when I die. Those are the last two I think I read. I'm trying to always just, and what am I reading now? Deacon King Kong. Um, I don't know the guy's name, but it was, have you heard of it? Um, it okay. Um, I just literally go to like New York times website or any of those and kind of look at the book reviews and that's what I do. And, uh, that was on Obama. It's one of Obama's books, his favorite books of the year. So I think that's where I got it, but.